we extend a warm and cordial welcome to one and all present here at the outset. Please accept our warm greetings of the Harvest Festival. Aap sabhi ko Makar Sankranti, Lori, Bihu, Pongal ki bahut bahut badhai. On this solemn occasion, we not only thank Almighty Lord for his kind grace, but also seek his kind blessings for all our future endeavors. May I now request you all to join us for the Gayatri Mantra. Om Bhur Bhubaswaha Tatsavitur Varenyam Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi Dhiyo Yona Prachodaya Om Bhur Bhubaswaha Tatsavitur Varenyam Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi Dhiyo Yona Prachodaya Today, we have a huge student population amidst us. To my mind, nothing describes today's child better than what Shakespeare said in Hamlet. They know what they are, but they know not what they will be. Hence, it becomes imperative on us to hold their hands and channelize their hidden talents to their dream destinations. Keeping this in mind, we organize career counseling sessions from time to time on various avenues and expand the horizons of our little ones. Today, we are happy to have a galaxy of stars from the field of visual arts. To be more specific, sculpting, painting, and drawing to mentor our children. We are waiting for Mr. Arun Yogi Raji to join us any moment, but the other panelists, let me remind you about them once again. We have with us Shri K. Srinivas, who's going to throw his beacon light on Tanjore painting. We have Shrimati Smita Aloni Ji, a fur painting artist of great repute. They are all here to enlighten us. Children, they will not only give flight to your imagination, but I'm sure they will convert your passion into profession as well. I'm sure you are all are very keen to listen to them. But before that, in the very beginning of the session, we could see so many hands going up, so eager to pop up their questions. So for them, here's a humble request from all of us. Kindly post your questions in the chat box or the QA box. After the presentations, the learned speakers will be taking them up one by one and answer and clarify all your doubts. Until then, please keep posting all your queries and doubts. Thank you so much. Our first panelist, Shrike Srinivas, is adept in both visual arts and traditional music. His Tanjo painting was adjudged, the biggest Tanjo painting by India Book of Records recently. And for his musical journey, he has already performed in more than 500 music concerts, adept at playing most of the Indian and foreign percussion instruments. He has the rare distinction of sharing the stage with maestros like SPB, Chindakuil Chitra, Srinivas, and many, many more. He also received the Best Performer Award from the musical legend M.S. Vishwanathan. Now he runs an art and music school where he trains and molds young talents like you for art and music competitions. Most humbly, sir, we request you to address the gathering. We are all yours, sir. Mr. Srinivas, please. Thank you, yes. sir. Yes, ma'am. Thanks for your lovely words. Pleasure all ours, sir. Yes, sir. So namaste everyone for in the webinar today. I'm very much happy to share my thoughts on the visual arts. Uh, we'll go this, uh, we'll take the session like this. So first I will be talking about something about the visual arts, how it is related to the tangible art 
and how, what are the the takeaways going to be gone for the students who learn the art so uh, i'll just share my screen now I think everyone can see the screen now. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So anyways, warm welcome to again for the Good Visual Art uh, webinar where I share the um, this beautiful opportunity, golden opportunity with very good uh, legendary in art artistic field, um, Smita uh, Loni ma'am and uh, Arun uh, Yogi Raj sir. And uh, pretty happy that um, I am from a DAV uh, family who was like a teacher in DAV before uh, five or six years back. So I wish to just share my thoughts and views, which which will be really helpful for the children who are going to take up the visual art as the career in future, or at least as a uh, supporting uh, you know, the career. You can even take like that. So to start with that, we'll just go like this. <clears throat> so first of all, what is visual art? Basically, what is visual art? Whatever you see, that is art, like visual. Whatever you see in a visual thing, it's a visual art. So it, it is like this. It is in uh, in a culture. You can show a culture in a visual art, uh, like this, like painting, which is there. It is a it's a kind of a culture shown, like it's a Bharatanatyam thing. It's a visual art in culture. And uh, this is a sculpture. The sculpture, the sculpting hero is in our meeting today. Uh, so that is a sculpture, that uh, sculpting thing. That is another visual art. And th this is another painting. Known as, you might have known this. Everyone would have known that. So that is again a visual art. And when you go for the film industry, it's like taking some videography or photography, whatever. So it, it again comes into the visual art thing. And it, it can go into the performing arts also. Like performing in the sense, it, it goes for some dances and other things. And then the conceptual art, and of course, the one which I have done, that is the tangible painting of Ganesha. Even that comes under the, uh, the visual art. Uh, to tell it again, like if you can see the logo, which are designed on the left side, that is my Sri Arts World logo. Even that is a visual art. That is That falls under the di digital art. So you can see the thing, uh, you can, because as, as ma'am told me, like ma'am told you all, uh, I'm you know, blessed with two arts, like music and art. I just want to design my logo by myself. So I had a brush in that in the middle and I have a, a musical symbol in that. So that is, that is again, uh, you no know, kind of a visual art. So this is the basic stuff, which I want to tell you what is a visual art, first of all, and coming to the next thing. So to have some golden rules on that. So what are the things you need to know before you do a, art like for example you i i have just have some golden rules for doing that so this is like that see um the drawing starts like this always you need to have some steps for doing anything like great so without any proper you uh, know the steps uh, it is difficult for us to move on so you need to have a proper steps like this that is shape forms and the detail this this uh, will be really helpful for children those who are really learning the art so whatever when you do, you can just make into like this. For example, I can just show you in a good example. See, if you see that, the picture which has been displayed now, you can see the shapes in the left side, just basic shapes like box or like a, like a circle, like a square, like that. So it is changed into a kind of like first the shape and now it is being forms and the detailing. So it goes like that. So this is the, you know, the procedure to have any art. So I think um, maybe if I'm going to share you some small informative stuff and that you can try, that would be really appreciable. So I request you, the participant who are in uh, the meeting can even have some rough paper or a pencil with you so that I will just uh, tell you a small trick for drawing a human anatomy. And then how we will, I will tell you how this human anatomy is connected to the tangible art. So... So you 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 will just see this one. See so you, you can see this uh, picture. It's like showing the skeleton sketching, and it is going inside the human anatomy. So this is going to be the basic stuff. So what I thought is I can just tell you how this is happening. So uh, I'll just show you in my Photoshop now. So this is like this. 
So first of all, what you can do is you can just draw a oval. Everyone can try. Just draw a oval like this. And from this, you can just set some skeleton sketching. You will you would have all known this one, the basic stuff, the human anatomy. This was the basic young days where uh, people will draw some. If you want to draw some crowd, you will definitely draw this one. Everyone would have drawn this in their life. So having that as a base, uh, you can easily create some beautiful human characters. See here, I'm just going to draw some basic stuff like this. See, it's some, some um, human anatomy. It's just going to slant on something. So for example, in this, you need to set an action point wherever you see a bending, like where you have a motion, there is a like that is called as an action point where you can have a flexible move there. So having this as a base, you will be just creating the next level of the drawing. So how it can be done? Let me just expand that also for you. I'll make this opacity a little less so that when I'm going to draw the um, main drawing, it will be really easy for you to understand. So I'm just going to have that as a base. And I'm just doing the basic structure of the human anatomy. So you can just develop like this. So this forms a, forms a pro, you know, pro, proper human anatomy. You can easily do like, like that. See, you can see some drawings which I've done. See, this is another one where you can see uh, a basic, basic skeleton sketching inside. So this one. So this is another one just, just doing some action. This is like kind of walking. So these are some things I wanted to share you. So like this, if you want to have some any kind of an action, like it's very difficult for you to uh, draw some uh, no basic structure without having a skeleton sketching. So this this idea would be really help, helpful for you. Try this and uh, uh, just show me. It will be really happy if you can just drop in somewhere. So we just move on to the next slide of presentation. So this is basic. How oh, this is connected with your uh, uh, tangent art? That only we are going to see now. And uh, before that, we need to know what, what was the previous tangier painting, like the era of tangier painting. So the golden days, the painting was done using the, you know, uh, the leaf. Uh, uh, they will just crush the leaf and take the juice out of that. They will take a green color. They will just mix with some reddish uh, leaf. They will take some fruits. They will just crush the vegetables like that. They used to take some natural no kind of uh, natural essence from the trees and they used to do the painting. Uh, this was like 1680 kind of uh, uh, things which, which actually the tangible painting was uh, you know, uh, started. So this was the first you know, kind of uh, olden days of tangible painting. And finally, like what I did is like, this was the painting which was uh, uh, rewarded the biggest tangible painting, which recently I got by the God grace and everything by elders blessings. So what this this I adapted the traditional method of doing that doing the statue painting. Uh, only the difference is nowadays you know the paints have been like more uh, kind of you no know, uh, improvised. So you can do you don't want to just go and get some leaves and other things for the colors. You you can just anyways get it from uh, the shops no the stationery shops. That is the so I have done using the paints which are really available now with a good quality. And how it is now modernized, even the tangent paintings have come like a plates now. So even the plates, you can see some tangent painting and in some clock, some in some small, small boxes kind of thing. And in fact, a key holder, key holder also has come in a tangent painting. So these are stuffs which have been changed, you know, from, from the olden days to the young, now the latest, latest thing of tangent art. So let me just quickly give a brief explanation how this process actually involves. And I'm pretty happy that I'm going to share you the things which I really did for that big tangent art. So this was the first step, which, which was the board preparation. So it is a very important aspect where you need to check proper board, like it should be a water resistant board. Uh, it can't be like some normal, uh, no, normal cardboard uh, things. It should be like proper uh, water resistant board. 
and that was the first thing and second step is like going to for the sketching sketching this the uh, here only you need to know that sketching part is very important so here only you need to have that anatomy structure and other things how you need to compose as i told you before that shape uh, forms and detail you need to think in that aspect so that you can easily do this sketching part and the third was like stone sticking stone sticking is and it's very important thing you need to choose a proper stones like it should be like semi precious stones from uh, jaipur jaipur is the place where the stones are really made a perfect thing which suits for the tanjore art and the next step is again a vital uh, role which is like mugging process mugging process is really uh, you know a tough time because like when you do do that it will easily skip out and you need to be really careful and you have to do like three or four times like it's the first base will be like a normal plain uh, mugging then it will go for the base mugging and then it will be going for the third mugging and then finally it goes for the detailed mugging so it takes some time but really it will be like interesting when you start doing that and it will be really challenging too and then it is gold foil sticking and it is the major part of a tanjore art where you need to have a proper uh, like gold thing uh, as now the days have changed there is there are some artificial leaves also where some beginners can use that because these are very costly uh, no it is very costly thing uh, because gold foils are really you no know, kind of uh, it's a original gold which we put in the tanjore art so for the learners it is re, re, when you do that and it it is very delicate because it it can't be like more pressed if it is going to be more pressed what will happen it will tear if it is not pressed it won't have the impression so it is little tricky to handle that so that's why what i request like i suggest my children to my learners to do my students to take some first artificial leaves which are available in market now and then once you have you know known properly like how you need to press that other things then you can go for the original gold foil so that was the fifth step and the sixth step is going to be like cleaning the stones like you need to um, once the gold foil is stuck you need to just remove the places where and all the you know the kind of stones have been stuck that is another important process of this and uh, finally it's coming to the painting detailing and outlining method so this was the painting thing uh, no it was like the process when i was doing that so these are things and finally once it's fully done this was the work of full um, no kind of painting which is done fully so this these are the basic no kind of uh, steps involved in creating a tanjore art uh, so i am very proud to have this in the webinar now because as um, as this is this is the biggest tanjore painting in the world, no in the india has been rewarded and hopefully in the world also uh, by god's grace and now coming coming to the very important session after this that is what would be the future of students learning this art so how how can they take up as a you know career uh, that is that that is the main uh, you know the part of this webinar itself so so the how they can just what all things they can do if they are going to learn this so students learning tanjore painting uh, will be able to handle almost all the mediums for example uh, so you you can you can try out some watercolor painting you can go for some acrylic color painting you can do some nib work oil painting because all these are, are some some small small part of this uh, tanjore painting so it is not that you, if you know if you learn the tanjore art definitely these all stuffs will come automatically to you so as as i'm musician i'm just telling you if you learn a mridangam mridangam is kind of a percussion instrument which is the king of uh, percussion they will call it as so if you really learn that mridanga almost all almost all the instrument like percussion you can just play so like that if you really you know focus on tanjore painting learn it to the core all of most of the mediums will be really familiar for you it's very helpful also for you the second point is like uh, and the questions will come for this because you do you have some like kind of proper uh, uh, colleges or uh, kind of uh, universities which really go for this art but uh, unfortunately there is no big uh, kind of universities for learning this tanjore art it should be done through guru shishya bonding only because these are some kind of a very traditional art where you need to uh, travel along with the guru so then only you can just reach that heights because there is there are many you know delegate things where you need to learn when when gurus are working on that so you need to see them working 
So I learned to like very much no. Uh, even even today I remember my guru. I need to thank him because such a great guru. Uh, I was with him almost like fifteen years. So I was with him like fifteen years, which which really no. He he actually calls him like you are my son. So it it was the bonding. So like that you need to you know create some guru shishya bonding. But nowadays we can't expect that much. At least. some uh, the kind of like guru shishya bhavana is very very important to learn this art so you need to have even i i am just running a, a school where i teach tanjore art and other music things so you can even check out the tree arts world uh, in my channel also you can just get the numbers and you can even contact dav uh, groups you can just they can just guide you on that so what i am coming to tell is you need to be very dedicated to to learn this art that is what i am coming to tell you because it is uh, beyond the money which you earn from out of that of course this art will give you really huge amount of money once you it is recognized that is for sure but this is apart from the money money concept like it should be like from your heart it should come from your heart that is very important of course um it if it uh, creates a very good income source as i told you it is not big of income but of course if in the world uh, fast world we need to have some source of income so which can be really helpful for you because it is very uncertain now for any uh, kind of you no know, career taking so we can have this and you can be an entrepreneur also in future that is this is the third point and get recognized in the society see if you can see um, everyone can know it, it 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 gives you a great pleasure it's it, it's a great pleasure get, getting recognized by people so uh, that i think that that is a very important point which you can uh, you know pursue any arts in that field so uh, keep this old tradition art alive that is very 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 important because these arts are like slowly like going out of the focus and we need to set the life for that because these arts are like from our you know india it's very important and it is some exactly from the tanjore which is in tamil nadu so we need to just get that art live so that is very important so to keep that live we need the next generation to know about that and uh, do a beautiful job and do dedicated job definitely that will be the finally this, this is a excellent point where you will have a peace of mind so whatever tension whatever problems you have in your life when you really do some artwork not only is any artwork like music or art or visual art the topic is visual art right so any art you take it it will definitely give you a peace of mind once you do that that is for sure the the students who are learning because uh, people are gone inside the gadgets nowadays no so you to get that you no know, uh, to get that proper stream and uh, for the good mind you uh, know it's getting up easily they are getting upset for any small small failures so that that things will be because for doing the pattern or pedi or anything definitely they will have 10 to 15 times failure only so that makes them know okay we need to do more do more do more so it they, it creates some mind you no know, like uh, we can withstand anything so of course find the end at the end of that that gives a peace of mind so i just like to uh, you know brief what all things i just shared with you today that is first that is visual art and the golden rules of art and the tricks of uh, drawing this human anatomy i i i think most of you have tried that uh, then then nature of tanjore tanjore art pioneering era versus the modernization today and the fundamental steps involved in creation of tanjore art and flourishing future of the students learning the tanjore art so thank you so much for being patient and listening to this uh, webinar and i hope so you will be getting more kind of you know stuffs from other two participants also thank you so much thank you shrinivas ji um thank you so much and the uh, point about peace of mind very important take away when you are involved in uh, your uh, artistic journey truly said sir in the times when we truly miss that with so much of uh, changes in uh, in our lifestyles because of the covid to be safe mind uh, is something which we all uh, look for can yes, exactly exactly yes. a few examples of uh, other visual works this is for the attendees uh, we today are addressing uh, only uh, the tanjore art uh, painting for the painting 
uh, sculpting. Apart from that, we have advertisements, commercial prints, artificial flowers and plants, artwork applied on clothing, which is what Smitaji is going to be talking about. And also uh, bumper stickers, that also comes under visual arts. Uh, create, that's, that's uh, stickers basically, uh, cartographic works, maps, globes, cartoons, comic strips, collages, dolls and toys are also part of uh, visual arts. So we are just, I think it's just the tip of the iceberg that we are uh, addressing over here. There's so much more to visual arts and a career in visual arts. Yes, Sudipta ma'am. Thank you ma'am for taking the forward uh, over there. And to Mr. Srinivas, thank you so very, very much, sir in the lucid manner in which you really taught us the intricacies of Tanjo painting that was really a visual treat. Thank, Thank you me. so much for reposing the faith in all of us. We hold the pens, for me at least, I've never ventured it out, but to tell you very frankly, even I'm infused and enthused enough to try it out. And for the peace of mind indeed, for the children, I would like to just add up over there what ma'am said. See, academics can add up as the backbone but we always say that the co-scholastic, the soft skills, they are actually over there as the lifeblood. We go on trying them out, whether you gain a certificate or not, whether you make a living out of it or not, if you have and pursue that hobby, it cannot be really translated into money, but the peace and the contentment that you get out of it is truly priceless. Please take, give it a sincere thought. It was indeed lovely, sir. Big thank thanks. You. Thank you, thank you. Uh, well, our next speaker, ma'am, we'll go ahead. Yes, ma'am. And also request attendees to post up your questions in the question a, Q and a box or chat box. Uh, we'll be addressing them. The panelists will be uh, fielding your questions uh, after the end of the session. Uh, I mean, that's the last part of the session. So requesting you to type away, type away the questions in the Q&A box. Thank you. You've already started. <laughs> well, uh, we would like to invite next Shrimati Smita Aloni ji, an eminent fur painting artist. Namaste Smita ji. For Namaste. the uninitiated, fur painting actually originates from Rajasthan and is a genre of dynamic storytelling through traditional fur scrolls. Using natural pigments on fabric, her work embodies the once well-recognized story of King Pabuji. She has taken this art form to even greater heights and her solo and group exhibitions in India and abroad has been greatly appreciated. Disciple of Presidential Award winner artist, Shri Kalyan Joshiji, she was recently felicitated for her immense contribution in the field of fur painting. Ma'am, we are truly proud and honored to have you over here. Kindly share your thoughts with us. It's all yours, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much. Namaste to everyone. And I'm really happy to know that you are putting up so much of efforts for visual arts. You know, I have taught in the schools and I, I really appreciate your thought process and thanks to your management, your principal and all the staff who are putting so much of efforts for art. You know, people say science lab is necessary in the school, computer lab is necessary, but art room is kept always at the back. <laughs> but uh, as I see your attitude, definitely our schools will improve and our schools will definitely start making art room as a priority. So thank you so much all the school staff for giving me this opportunity to talk to all the students. I hope some parents are also there. And I'm, as my introduction is already given, so I don't need to repeat it again that what kind of art I do. It is a traditional fur painting, which are narrative stories. And now what you are seeing on the screen is one uh, painting on Ramayana. So I have done a lot of stories on Ramayana, ma uh, then not Mahabharata, but from Krishna's as it goes towards the uh, different stages of Krishna's life. 
also i have done for the common people like you and me who also can be painted as a story like my story i have painted which you can see in my background so there are so many different kind of things which we can do with the fad art as sir already explained you now uh, as this is a family tradition mostly uh, before all the arts used to be family traditions and never used to be given even to the daughter for the fad painting it used to be given only to the son and not to the daughter but as the years passed away now it is given to everyone and everyone i mean to all the age groups as well so for learning art i always believe there is no age bar if you are 5 year old you are still learning how to draw when you draw when you write a b c or numbers you learn in your kindergarten stages you are actually learning how to draw the line you recognize because someone is telling you that you know that zero this circle is a zero that's why you call it as a zero one you are say it to call it as a one otherwise it's just a straight line so according to me we learn to draw always before we learn anything else so you all are learning drawing so i cannot expect any one of you say that ma'am i cannot draw i don't know how to draw you know i have listen all these things all the time so we all can draw what we are writing what literate people are doing is all drawing it is just we are said that call this as this that's why we are calling it so we all are drawing only drawing in some other meaningful way is called a drawing you know so we all can start looking at the things as in visual arts sir already told you look at every possible thing it has art the moment you wake up you take the toothbrush in your hand you know that toothbrush is also designed by some artist the toothpaste pack is also designed by some artist so art is everywhere when we go and put up the stove on all our kitchen utensils someone some day has designed that pot that it has to be like this and that artist has done that job and we are just using it so art is everywhere when we are painting the house we are building the house we are making furniture we are doing upholstery so there is no end as radha ma'am said just now so many names she has given to the professions so any any form of art anything is art when you know you serve the thali in your pongal you you just see the color combinations i always see when on the banana leaf when we serve different things how colorful it is how beautifully it is placed isn't it a art everywhere you know the way it is served the way we cook the things cooking is also art so art has no boundaries at all you can see it everywhere only we need to do a bit sensibly when you go around in tamil nadu i am very sure i have not visited unfortunately but i know that you have very good flowers there so when you go to the market or pass through it always observe how beautifully the flowers are done in the garland how they are presented you know the combination sometimes orange white red whatever different colors how beautifully that artist had made that garland so they you have so much to observe some vegetable sellers when they arrange the vegetables you know these things i am observing and appreciating since i was a baby since i was very small whenever i go to even today i am getting fascinated with the pot makers you, who makes diya who make uh, clay pots matka what we use at home i always used to be amazed by seeing all of them so you know these things are always you need to look around look around what is happening what is happening 
and to practice to practice art you don't need to find out the class first oh i need to go to art class i need to find a time to do that no that should not be there we always have time whenever we are sitting we are sitting in front of television don't just spend your time in sitting and looking at television no take something for scribbling take a leftover paper take a newspaper of that day and whatever pen pencil you have in your hand keep drawing some circles lines ovals you know my favorite is spring shapes so you keep doing doodles like springs that gives you such a good hand to make curve line so keep doing these practices whenever i sit at the airport keep looking around try to sketch something over there when we are traveling for longer time there are longer flights just sit there try to finish one sketch there are a lot of things around just try to draw a chair just try to draw a spoon doesn't matter so art is everywhere and you can practice it everywhere going to university pursuing the uh, career or whatever that comes much later so when you start looking at things appreciating things one more very important thing i will tell you that please try to learn how to pay for the art you know today you will pay for the art that's why someone will pay for your art as well so we need to start this culture we need to start this thing that we need to pay to the artist it can be some clay pot or someone is making dolls someone is making diya or flower garland anyone they are all artists try to preserve a small art piece that doesn't need to be a very renowned artist piece it can be a small piece made by a craftsman but you need to preserve them today if i am paying 50 rupees to someone without bargaining which is very important so if i am paying 50 rupees to someone someone will pay me 500 some day so you need to keep this always in mind if i am paying for this art i will be pay, paid as well so uh, and this uh, honestly i have learned from a uh, lot of countries in europe and us they have a very good culture of collecting arts you go to any small house very very small house and just a sweeper or cleaner or even like them they they will always have small small pieces of art in their home done by originally some artist no prints right now there is a very big fad of taking prints and putting it in home but try to encourage having a small piece but original that 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 is a heritage which you can pass it on to your next generation by a small piece maybe around 500 rupees you still get a good art in 500 rupees in our country we are fortunate to get that so just buy a small piece if we are going to some birthdays parties you don't need to buy very expensive things buy some handmade thing small thing and you present it let people learn to appreciate handmade things appreciate craft appreciate art and then only this culture will go on and one day we all will have a very successful art career we don't need to really encourage people to take the art and we don't need to tell people that how to do the career in the art so you need to really concentrate on these things try to look around you so this is my humble request to everyone whether it is a adult or a young kid or anyone try giving gifts in the same way buy a small thing give it to someone and there are different kind of arts like if particularly i say to traditional art why we should learn traditional art it's not because i am telling you it is because traditional art is not only your own identity 
but also it is all around you like your grandmother was doing it your mother was doing it and you are doing it it is like how you put the polam how you put rangoli as my grandmother was my first guru who taught me how to draw the line by rangoli i was very young by then so uh, definitely in your house your grandmother has done your mother has done you are doing it now a very simple thing i will tell you about kolam i don't know how much you know about it but kolam is just not a design there is always meaning in those lines so when you are drawing the kolam try to collect the information from your mother or grandmother what are the different kind of kolam you do if there is a festival now suppose it is pongal so i am sure for pongal there is a particular kind of design your grandmother used to me you know it it has a meaning which we are losing nowadays by modern modernizing that art we are doing flowers and different decorative things in kolam and we are losing that original essence of kolam i am not sure about tamil nadu but over here this is happening in maharashtra a very traditional way of putting rangoli was doing dots and then joining those lines but nowadays if you see we are doing lot of different things and then we are making very big rangolis so if there is diwali we are making very big rangoli but instead of very big i always feel what was the traditional way of diwali what my grandmother used to draw very small simple things but there used to be turtle on particular day there used to be snakes on nag panchami day so it it has a particular meaning if we learn traditional art so try to collect these small things around you you don't need any class or any educational institutes for that our own home is our institute so please try to learn all these things use your natural resources use whatever you have your uh, all around so these are the things i want to say and finally why you should learn it because you are the one who are going to take it away take it away from india to other countries also you are going to give this tradition to next generation my job is to pass on to you but you have the same job to pass on to others as well thank you so much i appreciate your time and now if you want to ask any questions or anything related to fur painting in particular in general you are always welcome you can give me lot of questions i am here to answer you thank you so much ma'am thank you thank you smita ji thank you so much um shri arun yogi raj ji our next uh, panelist is not available to take the call today due to his issues at his end uh, so we'll be having shrinivas ji and shrinivas ji and smita ma'am uh, taking up the q and a shrinivas okay. ji uh, would you want to take up uh, 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 add on to what smita ji said and maybe then go on to q and a yes ma'am yes ma'am sure uh, so as uh, ma'am has told like very clearly like it should be like kind of coming from the heart not from like this like uh, getting like commercial things so it is there definitely and i would like to like uh, answer the questions uh, see that questions so first which painting is best for using photos which painting is best for is the best for using photos sir that was the first question yeah so uh, which painting is best for in the sense it is like uh, always like a oil painting on canvas that would be really you know uh, great for some portraits because usually uh, even even watercolors are fine but if you do in that oil painting it, it has some you know realistic uh, the skin tone over that so you can do uh, you know some realistic work on that that doesn't mean that some pencil shading or like watercolors has not uh, you know get that uh, perfection it will have it but still uh, if you go for oil painting that would be really good for the photos that was the first uh, question uh, second one that do you teach tanjo painting tanjo painting in school in your school 
yeah, I, of course, I teach standard writing in my school. You can just see, log into that uh, Sri Arts World, S H R E space A R T S World. You can see the painting, uh, the latest painting which I have done, the video in which I have shared the website details. You can just check on that. And also, you can get back to me. That is for sure. I can help you out. The next one. So, uh, <laughs> said they want to know how early it gets over. <laughs> that, that is a very great question. <laughs> See, it depends fast. actually. It depends actually. I know uh, it depends. For example, I can just show you something. Please, okay. sir. That would be a pleasure indeed. See, this is one painting which I'm doing right now. So this is kind of this is I'm going in the second mugging now. Can you see that mugging? Right? So uh, this is a little bigger one. So uh, it, it will take at least 20 to 25 days to complete this. We are going to uh, focus on all the process. Like I just want to start from the board preparation. So even the board preparation needs some time. So everything, no, uh, it is not like like fast food thing because mm -hmm. you need some process in that. So you need to first prepare that board properly and that board should dry properly. And then you need to put that uh, cloth, which is there at the top. So that is kind of called as Gada, Gada cloth, which doesn't have some borders over there. So it will have a plain cotton uh, cloth where you need to have some process over doing that. So how will you process it is like you need to put it in some hot water for one or two days. It should get out of the starch. The starch should come out. Otherwise, what will happen? It will have a sticky feel on that. So the starch should be removed out of the uh, cloth. For that, it takes at least uh, one or two days to time. And then only we use that. And then we'll have it should be put in so we call, uh, you know, the kind of liquid vehicle and then you will squeeze it and then tape that. So that is the board preparation. You can take two days to three days to make the board ready. So the, that's what the, that that is the thing. And if you if you are going for the little lesser one, like smaller one, this is my actually like art art area where I used to do my artworks. So this is another way. I didn't yet finish it. This is some Mahalakshmi uh, kind of thing. Raja Shamara Devi. Usually, what I do is I to I take some uh, paintings which are really rare, and I need to do it in the way like it should be unique. So normally, the uh, Tanjore art means they will have uh, some uh, kind of like uh, Krishna, like uh, Ganesha. These are some normal things which come in the Tanjore painting style. But uh, I need to be little you no know, different in doing that. So what I do is I take some you no know, different kind of, for example, some Kuladeva. Like Kuladeva means what? They will have some deity god of themselves. So that deity god, they need to do it in the Tanjur painting style. They, they, they would have been, no, no, they will not have some uh, regular uh, printout for that. So we need to start drawing where the first point which I told will be really useful. Where you need to come from the first forms, uh, then go for the like, shapes, forms, detail. You need to first start sketching that. And later only you get one. And this is one kind. And if you go for the next one, this is this is embossed. See, for this it, it needs little more uh, work. See, you can see something which is getting embossed. So this is kind of embossed tangent art, where uh, it will create a three-dimensional field over there. So you need to put in more uh, work in that. So it depends upon uh, the what subject you do. No. What subject you really do, and how, what is the you no, know, uh, what is the kind of uh, tangora you are going to do? It is going to be like uh, normal flat work, or it can be like it, it is three day it's a, it's a molded one, or like it is fully embossed, or it is semi embossed. So it depends. Normal tangent painting with size of fifteen by twelve, it takes at least ten days to finish. That is the thing, but it has different uh, you no know, kind of uh, days taken for different kind of tangent arts and it depends upon the subject if you see the big tangent painting which i have done it took me five years to complete that so wow. for sketching yeah for only sketching uh, because i need to co collect the data right? it is not that just like a paint anything or draw anything i need to need, know each and every feature of that uh, the mahalakshmi which are there in the corners so you need to know everything what are there in the hand what is there in the you no know, what uh, you know wahana that is vehicle the goddesses will have everything you need to just know. Uh, it took me six months to you know explore what are things I need to draw first of all, and then it was like a uh, thing to sketch it out. So then it came like when more preparation, stone work, gold piles, marking work, it depends 
it went almost like more than five years. So I started around like May 2015. And of course, I didn't add on one year because uh, one year, like I just want to skip, like I would have gone somewhere, I would have gone from, from concerts. So those days, I, if I'm going to minus, one year would be minus. That's why I tell you, like it took me five years. Probably. At least three to four hours, I work a day for that uh, pair, like a big tangible art, which really gave me a success. So that was the second, uh, th third question. Next one. Any next Thank question? you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, it's an honor and pleasure to uh, welcome Sri Arun Yogi Raji. He's oh, uh, really? joined the call. Super, Great, super. Sir, thank you. Um, in my heart swells with pride as I'm here to welcome and introduce Namaste. Sri Arun Yogi Raji, a name that truly needs no introduction. A multifaceted talent, an MBA, a sportsman par excellence who represented his college and university volleyball team. And above all, an artist, a sculptor. Hails as he from a family of sculptors. Sculpting is in his blood. The majestic 3D statue of Sri Adi Guru, Sri Adi Shankaracharya, which was unveiled by Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi Ji at Kedarnath Temple premises in Uttarakhand on November 5, 2021 stands out as a testimony to his immense hard work and precision. And since then, he has become a household name. Apart from chiseling the magnificent idol of Sri Adi Shankaracharya, his other famous works include 14.5 feet white marble stone sculpture of the Maharaja Jayachamendra Rajendra Vadeyar in Mysore, life size white marble sculpture of Sri Swami uh, Ramakrishna Paramahansa, a monolithic stone statue of Sir Vishweshwaraya at Mangalore. The list is endless. His work has been greatly admired and appreciated. Among his admirers, we have none other than Kofi Annan, former Secretary General of United Nations. He has also received many awards. To name a few, Nalwadi Award 2020, Rajotsav Award of Mysore District Administration, South Zone Young Talented Artist Award by Government of India, Shilpa Kaustubha by Sculpture Association. Cliche, though it may sound, we often say that children are like soft clay and the onus lies on us to mold them and give them a proper shape. Our panelist today, the last panelist today, Sri Arun Yogiraji walks the talk. He also runs a school of sculpting and uh, he, uh, the name of the school is Kashyap Shilpa Kalaniketana and, and to use his own words he inculcates the knowledge and skills, skills of sculpting in the upcoming generation. He runs the school free of cost. Sir, we are truly honored and at the same time humbled by your esteemed presence over here today. We are very, we are very eager to hear from you, sir. Welcome, sir. Namaste, madam. And uh, firstly, I apologize for the delay uh, coming here because of some unscheduled uh, uh, plan happened here Understood. and uh, uh, it's a great opportunity and for given to me and uh, I take this opportunity to thank you all uh, first of all uh, I'm I'm a what you call a blessed person compared uh, what you call a, sorry I'm a little bit uh, just arrived now Okay, uh, I start. I just uh, briefly tell my uh, childhood days and also about the sculpture and the opportunities in sculpting field. Uh, firstly, I started sculpting when I was twelve years old. Hello. Yes, sir. You are here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. At the same time, I I was doing my uh, education parallelly, uh, which is. 
my father told me that at the time at the time of education we will be concentrating on education uh, study and uh, what you call uh, sculpting was we what you call we practiced together like a play so i started full time uh, uh, sculpting from uh, 2008 after completing my mba and i was working in a private sector i left the job and i started uh, doing this and uh, i made, uh, my mind was very clear while i was taking this profession even though my mom was opposed me so much not to come to this profession because it is a blue collared and a very dusty job uh, but this profession where we will get uh, more respect than the normal so so i i made my homework i decided i want to learn whatever the things which is there with my father knowledge just i want to learn that i concentrated on that first 6 years i don't want to divert anything i don't want to go for any expansion of my work or anything like that just i keep concentrating on learning learning what are the techniques and i uh, made a lot of uh, research regarding uh, our ancient what they have done in sculpting sector so this was an exercise i decided just to concentrate on learning after 6 to 7 years i started expanding regarding uh, my education is also very helpful for that like i started doing some uh, creative things and uh, leadership also required to make this sculpting a uh, very successful it's a group work first of all it was not done by an individual stone sculpting is time oriented at the same time we need to maintain a team and also we need to train them we need to think of commercial aspect so i taken care of everything later uh, after 6 years of my uh, what you call practice with my father i started expanding this so i i would like to uh, what you call give some suggestions for the students for all here so we need to identify our interest at the young age at the same time we need to join a school or colleges regarding the visual arts department in wherever we are so let us say if i am studying in puc and i want to become a sculptor what i will do so firstly i would like to search regarding the colleges available nearby our home so whatever the interest i will take the degree regarding uh, uh, like bachelor of fine arts or something like that after that at the same time parallelly we need to go for training under a skilled artisans in our city so that we will be studying we will be getting the degree at the same time we are acquiring some uh, skill and uh, we can improvise our knowledge regarding art so doing this after completing our degree we at the same time we will be acquiring some skill from the senior artists it's also very helpful to become financially stable or to perform well or to continue this profession we are very much what you call a capable artisans at the time of at the end of the degree if we only concentrate on degree we miss something because outer world there is a big gap between the education system at the what actually uh, art world demands so to fill that they have to go to the college at the same time they have to make sure that at least one or two hours they will be working with the senior artisans in and around the city where the students will live so that will help them uh, what you call they also that will give the confidence for them to be a very uh, what you call a, a, a satisfied artist in the society so uh, any any questions regarding just i would like to yes sir uh, so there's one question how did you uh, i think this is addressed to all the three kritika shri bhaskar has not addressed to whom she wants to ask this question how did you know you wanted to take up art as your career i think all the three panelists can uh, feel this question how did you know uh, how did you know you wanted to take up art as a career if you allow me i 
I would yeah, like please, to please this. go ahead. Please go ahead, Smita, ma'am. <laughs> Actually, it is a very interesting question she has asked. Uh, when I read, it, it reminded me of my young age. You know, I didn't have any Radha ma'am kind of principal who could guide me to a <laughs> few mentors who can guide me for art. But please choose the correct career if possible. Right now, you are in the correct age and stage to do that. And how you will know, because if any other subject is not giving you happiness, that is the easiest way. You know, when you read the storybooks and you like the story only where there are pictures, this is how I interpret myself. I never like the subjects or books which has no pictures. If I'm very good in geometry and not in other kind of mathematics, if I have taken biology or science only because I can draw pictures in that. So these are all my traits which I can share with you. That is how you will know that you don't like to do science because you are reading science. Just because I was very good at drawing and I like to draw all the time. That's why I have taken that because it has a lot of pictures. So, you know, these are very simple things. And other than that, if you have taken wrong subject like me, at my time, because you are good at studies, you have to go to science. Because you have done science successfully in your graduation, you are doing post-graduation. So I have done my post-graduation in organic chemistry. After that, I was doing research. And believe me, I used to just look at the time that what time it will finish and I go and run away from here. So I was waiting for that job to go. I was doing uh, my research on molasses and that anaerobic bacteria was not surviving and I was supposed to <laughs> make a system which bacteria can uh, work on that molasses. And I was so so upset with all those things going around me. The day I left that research, I was like happy like anything. And from that day onwards, I fully, fully devoted myself to art and I'm enjoying till today. I have no regret that I have left my research. So do not go in a direction right now. Get the indications from all around. Are you actually enjoying or you are doing that subject because you are scoring well? So scoring well is another thing and enjoying is another thing. The enjoying can be your passion, but scoring cannot be your passion at the end of the day. So I hope this is good enough. Good enough. True. Very, very true, ma'am. <laughs> uh, uh, on the subject, Smita, ma'am, there's another question for you. What are the yeah. steps involved in storyboarding for a FUD painting? Yeah, in FUD painting, if uh, we are taking traditional uh, story of Pabuji, so that was painted first time 700 years ago and what I have painted today, all the places which character will be placed, it is all fixed. We don't change it. So the place of king, place of other characters in the story, they are always fixed and they are painted in the same way. But suppose I am taking my own story. Now I have done on Ramcharitmanas. So I read Ramcharitmanas and then I have to decide that should I give importance more to Hanuman, Bali, Subrave, Sita, Haran? What, what incidents I need to give more emphasis? In this story, a very simple thing is whatever bigger figure you see is more important in the story. So you need to highlight that character according to your own interpretation. So that is how you make the block. You make the framework of the story first. Then you decide where it will go and then you fix it. It is done with a very limited color palette. So you have just five or six colors in your hand and you paint almost 100 characters in the story. So that is the beauty of doing it. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, 
So, so Diptaji, uh, questions that can be uh, taken by... Yeah. Uh, How to ensure that while we draw our strokes, are not able to read this? Give me a minute, ma'am. Are mature and bold. How do we make our artwork look realistic? This can be open to anybody. May I repeat again? How to ensure that while we draw our strokes, they are mature and bold, and they can be made to look realistic. Now, making strokes bold and very correct is depend on how much confident you are. If you are confident enough, if uh, like we say, oh, she is very good at art. So good at art means she is very confident in drawing a line. When you are drawing a line, if you breathe in, breathe out fast, you know, it's a very, very much related to your breathing. My guru taught me that when your breath is very steady, your hand is steady, your line is steady too. Wow. The, the moment you hmm. are panicked, you are not confident, you are afraid, definitely your breathing will affect, your hand will shake and your line will shake as well. So this is just how your brain works, your hand works too. So that comes with lots of experience. Not only the skills that you have learned, you have to put in quite a few years, then only you get that kind of a master stroke, if I may be allowed to use that. Very true, yes. Uh, Ma'am, I think I'll give it to Sir for this question before. The best colleges in Chennai for design, Sir, if you can help our little ones. Srinivad, Sir? Yes, Ma'am. So there, there are uh, fine arts college, actually, uh, before going inside the fine art college, you can actually try from the eighth grade. Like if you pass the eighth grade, uh, there is so, well, like open um, thing in like Tamil Nadu open uh, universities where they go for some diploma courses uh, for freehand model outline drawing. There is a paper called as like that. And you can go for uh, lower, higher. And there are some more divisions like uh, you can go for geometrical designs. You can go for pottery. Uh, you can go for uh, tailoring, uh, you can go for water painting, or oil painting, for every each and every mediums, they have the courses in Tamil Nadu, uh, like kind of universities, they are, they, are, they are there, and it is all about like six to seven months course only. So you need to just finish off that for your uh, eligibility criteria to lower grade is eight standard pass, and for the higher it is 10 standard plus. You can just apply in uh, Tamil. You can go for the DPA and you can uh, enter DPA. Like, uh, it is in like uh, Edmore, uh, near Edmore. DPA. DPA Tamil office. Yeah, yeah, DPA. Yeah, yeah. They can just enter there about the, some small, small courses where you can easily certify that. And later, once the 12th is done, uh, you can go for the professional de degree like uh, BFA, Bachelor of Fine Arts uh, in uh, Edmore uh, no, Arts College. And then you can apply for MFA, that is Master of Fine Arts. For getting more touch and you can particularly go for some yeah, uh, no kind of painting or you can take the stream which you want to do as we do for some other subjects we take one for example if you are going to uh, do some master in some science means in particular science you have some categories like that you can go for the bfa is like based for all the art and then you can choose what art really comes for you better in a better way and you can master that in mfa yeah specialization has to be decided only later but thank yes. you so much for this basic information, sir. Yes, Honestly yes. speaking, even I didn't know that after 8th standard itself, it is open and we can go in and try out whatever suits our taste and temperament. Yes, that was yes. really very, very important a decision. Uh, sir, for artificial gold foil, which glue can we use? That's the last yeah. question that comes from Manishika. Yeah, that is like Arabic gum is like uh, she has told the perfect. No, Arabic yeah. glue itself. She yeah, 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 Arabic. Yeah, Arabic glue is kind of uh, you can see that in the show you also here. I was just using that only. <laughs> Before uh, hour, I was just using this. This is Arabic gum. Okay, this is uh, yeah, this is nothing but uh, this is an excrete which which comes from the uh, trees and all no? that small small kind of glassy thing, which uh, it, it should be processed. It should be processed and it should be stuck. Uh, if you can do this process, you can use Arabic gum. Otherwise, you can go for some uh, a proper fevicol like thing, uh, like this SH SH fevicol. This would be better for sticking it. There is a specification. You can't just go for any normal fevicol. <laughs> 
that won't work out. So you need to be using for, gold over there. We need to be very yeah. very careful and this, the this sensitivity. Is for, yeah. yeah, this is for artificial uh, gold plate for on gold. alone. But for na normal like na natural gold foils, you need to use only Arabic gum because that is the tradition. Because that only gives you hundred to two hundred years guarantee for the painting. <laughs> Ah, okay. Yeah. The secret is in the trade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need this uh, gum. What you said, sir, we also use the same in fur painting. Oh, very so, nice. When, when we prepare the colors, this is added to the pigments for as, as an adhesive. So this is always used to do the black line. Now in my work, if you can see, there are a lot of black fine lines. Yes. So these lines cannot come perfectly until I add this to my... Ma'am, is it again for the same reason to add up to the longevity of the artwork? This was the only adhesive available at that time when they invented... Oh, okay, okay. natural and adhesive from, from the, the previous tradition. track. Yes. Okay, ma'am. That's so nice. And even now that only works. Old is always good. <laughs> yes. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Well, ma'am, uh, from the earlier chat box, I noticed one question, uh, a million dollar question, if I may say, difference between Madhubani and Fud painting. This is something which I think most of the it's attendees funny. have. Yes, 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 yes definitely. Uh, wh whenever you look at the paintings, first thing you try to recognize the figures. What kind of figures are there? In Madhubani, figures are different and in Fud, they are different. In Traditional kind of fur, you will always see more use of red color as the border. Whereas in Madhubani, you see more use of black lines. Mm. All lines are many times, they are double outlines in Madhubani. Whereas in fur, it is only one line outline. So there are very clear differences between these two. If you observe it carefully, you can see. There are a lot of minor differences as well patterns, designs, and that for the common people, these are the small things which Red you can have. Black. Okay. Yes. Um, there's one more question. I would like to inquire about product designing and scope for it in the future. Now, where, whom do product, I direct it to? Product design, am I, some of the students have done. Huh. Uh, one has done from the Bangalore itself, and now she is going to UK for her post-graduation. And uh, one has done from Bhopal. So they, they are uh, really good courses. And uh, now she wants to go for jewelry design. So there are a lot of different things. Uh, she used to, one of them used to design purses. So they, like what we use, the ladies purse. So th there are different kind of products and different kind of uh, things. But basic you can do from any university. And for post-graduation, always you choose very carefully what kind of specialization you want to do. Accordingly, you should go for that. Thank I you, think... ma'am. Yes, ah. ma'am. Uh, Sudiptaji, yes, we have Shri Arunji's uh, work coming up, a slide. Uh, requesting ah. Shri Arunji to please add on to uh, the slides, sir. If you can just uh, talk to us about uh, the slides that are going to come up. Radhika, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We'll do the sharing now. Yes, yeah, please do, ma'am. Thank you so much. Famous one. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, actually, this is Adi Shankaracharya statue made on stone called Krishna Shila. Uh, we have a small story here, just I would like to share here. Uh, there was an invitation for the artist from all over the country to make a model. Uh, then uh, I was given a 3D model from the Prime Minister office. I requested them to give me the freedom so that I can sculpt my own way. So they took... Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yeah, please yeah. go ahead, sir. Yeah. Uh, I requested the Prime Minister office to give me the uh, freedom so that I will sculpt my own model. And I don't need a model charges for that. So uh, they took one day and they gave me permission for that. So I prepared a two feet stone model for uh, Prime Minister uh, for Adi Shankaracharya. Like that, uh, they've got the model from all over India, around eight to nine models. So 
I, one day evening, I received a call from Prime Minister's office that I, my mod was selected to make uh, Shankaracharya statue at Kedarnath. Uh, so uh, here I'm just uh, recalling my confidence on me or uh, I believed in me that I can make better model than the provided by the Prime Minister's office. So this was the model prepared by me. Just And one challenging part I would like to share here to make a sculpture of a bald person wearing a, a shalya on, on his head and making, making him look very divine. That is very challenging part I would like to share with you. And, uh, and uh, this was a great opportunity and I wish every artist will get opportunities like, they, like this in their lifetime. Truly inspiring, sir. Very well said. Very well said, Arunji. Thank you. So this is the volume of the statue. I'm just standing there. Yeah, amazing. Uh, and also, also, it's a very cold uh, environment. It was around uh, two to two degree to minus four in the evening. Yeah. <laughs> so it was very difficult, and uh, it was very challenging. And also, that atmosphere itself is very positive. So we never felt uh, tired or something like that. How we long it took for you to finish this? So we, we worked around nine months continuously, 14 hours a day. Okay. And uh, the program was already fixed and it was very short time. Executing on stone, uh, we, we got only one chance to do it. Mm -hmm. So at the same time, bigger sculptures, even small mistakes will look bigger. Mm -hmm. So we, we try to minimize the mistakes and also uh, just I want to make sure that I don't want to give an excuse that we made it on stone so that it's not good. So mm -hmm. everyone is asking that it is made up of stone because uh, I just tried to go for very much detailing so that they, th they think it is a bronze statue. Amazing. Really amazing, sir. So we, we procure around 130 tons of raw material. Once it is finished, it came to around 30 tons for this project. Mm -hmm. Rajikumar, other slides, if you have them, so it's other work. I have shared it also. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes. So this is a, a monolithic marble statue of Lord Maharaja of Mysore Kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, two more sculptures in Mysore, which was sculpted by artisans from uh, European countries. This is the first time I got the opportunity to sculpt this. And at that time, uh, it was inaugurated by Chief Minister of Karnataka. He openly said that uh, uh, the Maharaja is looking alive. So that is the best compliment I received from the Chief Minister of Karnataka at the time of inauguration. And this is a uh, uh, marble sculpture. Mr. Paramans. Mr. Paramans. Ah, <laughs> yes, th this is India's biggest now. This is sitting posture monolithic sculpture of Ramakrishna Paramansa, a 12 feet sculpture. Here also, I, I was called by the uh, government authority to make this sculpture. So they told me to make around three and a half feet sculpture for that location. I suggested them we'll go for around 12 feet because of the volume of the circle at the volume of the mantap. So they disagreed with me and I gave a presentation. I took the printout of uh, 10 feet sculpture and I called the commissioners and everyone. I presented in front of them and uh, I made them agree for the size, what I suggested. So after the inauguration, they are telling my, my suggestion was correct. Mm -hmm. And now it is India's biggest culture of Ramakrishna Paramahams. Yes. So again, this is Dr. B. R. Ambedkar statue with Manta. All these three circles are very big circles in Mysore right now. Uh, and this is for Mysore railway station. I made this bronze statues. Uh, the concept was given by divisional railway manager that life is a journey and uh, they want to represent young, strong Indians. So on that concept, I designed this uh, and uh, executed for Mysore railway station, sculpted this for Mysore railway station. And this is uh, a creation of creation, a concept given by... Actually, this is a replica of an uh, artist from Norway. And even uh, I made this for Mysore 
university school of planning and architecture so that is a replica uh, this is uh, for 125th year anniversary i designed this for mysore zoo mm -hmm. it's a four dimensional sculpture it's a 20 foot tall so that uh, uh, alphabets uh, it's supported from all all angles it looks zoo Yes, sir. So these are some portrait works I sculpted. Yeah. These are stone sculptures, madam. Regularly, I was working on. There's a. Again, Anuman monolithic stone statue. That's amazing. Uh, amazing. Nine feet uh, stone sculpture. Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> Looks really nice. No, it's a realistic feel. I can see that. Yes, yes. Uh, different types of Ganesha. Yes, I keep trying different style. Yes, ma'am. So that is our traditional Nandi. Uh, here i try to blend uh, realistic and our traditional ornaments together uh, yeah, in this nandi uh, three bells uh, it will move inside madam it's a monolithic stone sculpture okay so that three bells will move inside again some of my works here. This is called a Chamundeshwari, Lakshmi, and uh, Savitri. Uh, everything is monolithic. This is called a Mysore style of art. Uh, we call it as revised version of Hoysala style. Uh, this is uh, Garuda stone sculpture, uh, which is around six feet tall. I made this for a uh, KRS backwater, there is a Venu Gopal Swami temple, recently renovated. So for that, I made this sculpture. That's it, man. These are some of my words. That's all. Yeah, fabulous, to say the least, sir. Amazing. Truly, sir. Truly this is, this is Ram Parivar. Ram Parivar and uh, I, this is Lakshmana. It's very interesting part here. Just yeah, he's so holding in front of his brother and he's giving his small <laughs> respect to his elder brother. Just like uh, small uh, imagination, I tried here. Hmm. This is something new. I, I have seen first time <laughs> Lakshman holding hands. Yes, yes, ma'am. Just I tried this. <laughs> So when we are at it, sir, there's one question. Sir, uh, is yeah. there? Uh, did you have any self doubt? Uh, did you? How Sorry. did you get rid of it? There's one question. One mm -hmm. attendee has posted a question. Well, uh, did you get any mm -hmm. self doubt about yourself being an artist? How did you get rid of it? I I thought I I think the child is uh, wanting to genuinely know when she is going through a self or he is going through a self doubt as an artist. How did you get rid of it? Did you have it? How did you get rid of it? Uh, everything we need to practice. There is no alternative for hard work or practice and dedication. So uh, we don't. First of all, to become an artist, we need a, we need to be very patient. So if you lose the if you don't have a patience, we can't become an artist. At the same time, I never felt that uh, I'm I'm what you call. Uh, uh, I'm not able to do that, but only thing I started giving more time for if we are not getting correct. That's the only thing I did, did it in my difficult times. I just take a break and also I'll give more time for where the problem is occurring. So yes. at the same time, uh, they need to be very patient. Uh, and also the passion uh, for that, always keep looking better and keep working ourselves, learning every day. So, uh, I never faced that situation. Okay. 
So there's this question in sculpting, what is the most challenging uh, part? What is the most challenging thing? In the challenging part is, uh, uh, the we got only one chance to execute whatever the thing we are doing. At the same time, the medium itself is very difficult. Uh, it will not come out easily. We have to interact with the stone every day. We have to be very friendly. At the same time, uh, stone will not, not listen to us. So we'll make sure that stone should listen to us. For that, you need to spend more time with stone. So that will allow you to, if you spend more time with stone, then it will start to listen to you. So the challenging part is we got only one option, whatever the things we are doing, the medium is very difficult. At the same time, it, it, it's something special. If you see uh, some rock will get into some shape by you, that feel itself is very... Uh, Exhilarating. Uh, yes, yes. Beautiful. Yes. Very beautifully you said. There was a question on the different types of sculpting. What are the different mm -hmm. types of sculpting? Okay. If you, if you call it as a different type of sculpting, I, I divide like this. There is a traditional style of sculpting, realistic sculptures, at the same time modern sculptures. So each, each sculpture demands different techniques. First of all, I would like to suggest everyone should have a basic knowledge of types of tools available, how stone will respond to you. And at the same time, we need to, again, whatever the thing, we need to spend time on that. So for me, I started doing traditional sculpture initially. At the same, at the same time, I want to make a realistic sculptures. So then I decided to study regarding anatomy, human anatomy, postures and gestures, and about uh, expressions, about the muscles in the face. So, so the types of will be traditional sculptures, realistic sculptures, and modern art, contemporary art. So for modern art, if you have developed some concept and how to execute that, again, you need to be very strong on your basic techniques of sculpting, like blocking method or uh, uh, how to give temperament to your tools because we need to connect the bond between the stone and the chisel what we use. If it is too hard, it will break. If it is too soft, it will slip away from the stone. It will hurt your fingers. So proper temperament is required. They need a proper training. Just like a lawyer will go with a senior after it's completing uh, uh, LLB. Mm. So like that, they need to spend some time with uh, artisans who practically working on stone. Right, sir. Since any other questions, Sujita, ma'am, that uh, the no, I'm just surfing through it for the same reason. One last glance, if at all anything can be good. This was the this so strange. How do we know our style? We all love to experiment. How do we get our signature style, sir? And probably the writer wants to know in which genre that they can try out in visual arts. I'm not very clear with this question. Okay, uh, uh, to make their own style, they need to first copy someone who they admire. Like I admire some my grandfather or this guru. For a few years I follow, I copied their style, their techniques and everything. If you keep doing it, then your own style will arise after some years. Mm. True. <laughs> So yes. we can't create directly uh, uh, our own style. Yes. Now, uh, in, in between hundreds of sculpture, they can identify my sculpture that it is Arun Yogira sculpture. So that takes time for you. Mm -hmm. uh, just I would like to share my experience. Earlier, I was marking the stone and I'm chipping, chipping the stone. Now I will develop a story every stroke. For, for example, if I'm doing a face, I will be telling my chisel that this is nose, then uh, this is the forehead. The forehead shape is like this. After that, there is a jaw. So we are sculpting, we are chipping out the jaw now. So now I've developed a story every day and I've tried to bring the relation between the jaw or the collar bone with the rib cages. There is a connection between each and every part. If you know in depth of that, then 
the finished product will people can see that there is a likeness in the sculpture for that they have to be like even i will be sculpting in my sleeping also if you mm-hmm. ask me how many hours i'm sculpting in mm-hmm. you know, even if i'm sleeping uh, in between i wake up and then see someone is sculpting because i hear some sound someone is sculpting so so it's it's about experience madam initially i was marking i'm just using geometry measurement copying the measurement like these days no i think that sounds yes. like your heart beat <laughs> thanks these days definitely i will when i was doing chankaracharya i experienced i am not able to bring the eyes properly so i i just just checked out what i have done again i started working i, I gave a holiday for my all employees and i told them no please go i need some private time to make this eyes so i started doing new i checked out what i have done i started doing the eyes again while doing it uh, i feel that he saw me he opened with his open eyes he saw me so oh. at that time i stopped My doing connection. at yes, at that time i stopped doing anything still i am need to finish it i need to do small filing and all those things i didn't touch it so after so many people saw this everyone is connected with the eyes even prime minister told that his eyes is reflecting his eyes is uh, have a life in this uh, speech so that what i feel uh, is is i still remember i can't explain how how that situation so i told my father is that here in aaj tak while speaking they actually told about you us saraswati ke us var putra jinke haathon patthar ji uthta hai aur bol bhi padta hai aur aapke banaye hue aankhon ki alag se tareef ki gayi thi that we all remember sir aaj tak channel mein aise hi bola gaya tha aapke bare mein yes at the same time the people so many when you speak like that Oh so God. many people came here to see that they started crying after seeing the eyes with that even i told my father that i this is what happened while working i thought he saw me i stopped i don't want to clean it or don't want to clean uh, rub it or do filing on that even if you zoom it you can see there is a small un- unwanted things there in the eyes <laughs> so this all the things will come after experience if you keep you know every day want to see if i'm doing ganesha first i want to see ganesha and uh, every day i keep looking morning evening at afternoon how he looks in the morning how he looks in the afternoon so if we see the what we want to do then people can see that you speak so well sir mm-hmm. and because of the divine connection only probably in your hands everything becomes so lively It's an honor to know you, sir. We are truly, truly my glad pleasure. to have you over here. It would be an understatement of the year, sir, if we say that we wanted to see you and talk to you. Indeed. <laughs> It's amazing. Correctly said, and very, feeling. very true. Yes. Amazing a feeling, sir. There's this one question, words. ma'am. Uh, Sudipta, ma'am, if I may. Yeah, please, ma'am, please. I'm so sorry. How did, uh, sir, this is uh, to all the three panelists. Uh, how do we get... how do we not get pressurized by the end results and enjoy the process sir ma'am this is from neeraj sudarshan do you have a routine for that so again yeah. it is going to be like okay ma'am we can understand no no i i didn't understand what he wants to know no. i'll repeat the questions smita ji the uh, uh, neeraj sudarshan wants to know how do we uh, enjoy the process and not get pressurized by the end results like uh the process of creating uh, how to enjoy it you have a routine for that okay yes sir if you want to answer please go ahead yeah because that is actually like practice only the practice makes no every day see immediately no one can ride a cycle fastly so he, he definitely you would have fallen at least once in lifetime when you start riding the bicycle so uh, it, it doesn't mean that you you will not even get in your life to ride a bicycle properly definitely you will get it one day so the the failures and all you need to make that as like footprints no what are mistakes you have done first time you can just rectify in next thing and what i do is when i'm having a reference um i do this technique when i see this this technique would be really helpful for children who are drawing anything so you need to have a reference for example you are having a reference you are drawing one side 
okay right left side is going to be reference means you need to just close your eyes for at least 10 seconds and you need to look at the main picture for 15 to 20 seconds continuously immediately you need to check out what you have drawn you can immediately trace out what what area is going going little mistake so you can correct that like that i used to do when i was like no when i was like, uh, learning the art i used to do like that so likewise you can just slowly cultivate you no know, the the habit of correcting things and one day you will be really pro 100% Okay. So, there is a question from one aradhana uh, what uh, valri art and fad art are they same ma'am <laughs> that's that's very funny to know this that valri art and fad art they are so 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 different that uh, whoever has asked this question they, you are a new generation students children if you even google you will know what is varli at least and then you will not call it fad but for your information varli is very easy to uh, know what varli is it is done by just one kind of lines one color line traditionally on brown uh, background white lines and kind of a stick people are done that is a varli because varli is a oldest art in india i believe it is uh, from the cave man Ca cave man used to write the messages as drawing that that time even language was not developed so varli is that old and fad has its own figures color story and it is done on the cloth so varli was done on the stones in the cave so it's quite a distinct quite different like um, no could be better uh, understanding no comparison varli. yeah that's varli yes yes ma'am thank you so much thank you so much and i would also like to inform to our panelists that we are in the av group of schools we are in the process of getting a syllabus ready for the art with uh, varli going for the first standard uh, students so we okay. have a syllabus chopped out for all the levels of students uh, right. with various kinds of art forms uh, structure we are giving That's a structure to the art and uh, drawing periods where uh, art teachers of the school group of schools have come together and uh, we are in the process of making our own publication ready with the wonderful of wonderful congratulations very much super very well thank you thank you ma'am uh, so uh, uh, yes sir yes. sir sir please do it come please go ahead sir please go ahead sir please, just i would like to answer to that question uh, how to avoid the pressurize before yes sir enjoy yes, the culting for that uh, what i will do i will not give much assurance to my customers regarding that uh, i will not talk with them i will not communicate much i will not give lot of hope that it will be very beautiful something like that at the same time we need to trust on our stages process we need to trust ourselves we need to enjoy the process uh they, for example i just give my example initial days when i was doing uh, portrait works i used to cry at night that i am not able to get the resemblance of what i am doing i was waking up around midnight 2 o'clock 3 o'clock and uh, i was crying that it's not coming but i never do, left it there i started practicing i started understanding the muscles everything now most of the customers out of 100 90% they will cry that they are resembling what they are doing if someone gave me the commission work of this father they are seeing it they are crying in front of me so this is what i am explaining initially i was crying now my customers are crying that they are looking at me like that that is that is your reward Yes. yes yes that is that is just i started believing in myself i give more time for that where the problem is there and i trust my uh, process and stages i my i simplified it in in, in the way uh, so that uh, i achieve the end result at the same time uh, take the photographs every day and try to make the document of that and try to improve it every time that's the only suggestion i can give for the newcomers 
and don't give it up. Definitely, it is possible what you want to do. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Ma'am, we have answered the questions, Sudipta ma'am. Have we uh, uh, got all the questions from the attendees? Mostly, ma'am. Everything that was relevant, we have fully covered them. I gave a glance. Uh, looks like we are done with. Ma'am, yes, am ma I allowed to draw the curtain now on today's session? Please, please go ahead, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so in that case, uh, most humbly, ma'am, Principal Ma'am uh, Radha Subramaniam, please, I humbly request you to propose the vote of thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Sudipta, ma'am. Pleasure. To be an artist, to be an artist is to believe in life. Art enables us to find ourselves and lose ourselves at the same time. Art is not what you see, but what you make others see. Art is never finished. It is always on. It gives me an immense pleasure to propose the vote of thanks. I express my heartfelt gratitude to Sri Arun Yogiraji for having taken out time of his busy schedule to motivate students and parents to explore the possibility of a career in sculpting. Thank you, sir. It was an honor to have you amongst us. I extend my heartfelt thanks to Srimati Smita Aloniji. The wonderful way you explained the simplicity of the FUD art form was heartwarming, ma'am. We could truly see the artist in you and you made us see the artist in us and the creator in us, the possibility of a creator in us. Thank you, Smita ji. Thank you. My pleasure. Last but not the least, I thank Sri Srinivas ji for the precise inputs about the various ways of perfecting one's talent. Thank you, sir, for throwing light on the fundamental steps involved in the creation of Tanjore art. Thank you, ma'am. I extend my gratitude to the enlightened audience, the attendees, who motivated us with the right kind of questions. Before I close, I would like to announce that the next webinar, the next session, will be about a career in actuarial sciences, scheduled for 5th February, 2022. I thank one and all, all those who made this wonderful session possible. Thank you very much. Namaste. Namaste, everybody. Ashwin ji? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. You can end the call, sir. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for the back end support, Thank sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Namaste, everybody. Namaste, all. Namaste, all. Namaste.